I do hope you've been enjoying the talks in the ServiceMeshCon 2020 track this year. My session will be taking Service Mesh a step further with a technology called WebAssembly. So my name is Christian and I am the field CTO here at Solo.io. I've been involved in helping organizations build large distributed systems for quite some time and most recently last three years or so in building architectures on top of Kubernetes and cloud native infrastructure, including things like service mesh. So at, at Solo, real quick, what we do is we help organizations after they've figured out how to automate their deployments with CI CD and deploying into containers and kind of breaking up some of their applications into microservices, how do they get those systems to communicate with each other? And the organizations that we typically deal with are trying to deploy redundant, highly available systems that are capable of um, experiencing degradation and failover in a seamless way. And at Solo, what we do is we help build API infrastructure uh, on technology like Envoy and Service Mesh to be able to span multiple clusters, multiple zones, multiple uh, geographies and, and use things like mesh and gateways to be able to get um, this transparent routing and secure communication, observable network, and, and the, these types of things. So in helping these organizations build these types of architectures, we see a lot of what's happening on the ground and more importantly in practice and, and what's, what's really happening. So what we do see is folks are adopting service mesh and they are taking it into production. They do have some initial challenges around which one to use, because as you're probably familiar with, and as you see the talks in this track, there are a lot of different options. And then your next question, especially as a large enterprise, is who's, who's going to support you? Who's going to give you the level of support that you need? Uh, and then there's always questions around um, how does it fit within an existing organization? Um, how does it fit with existing applications that weren't very native to uh, a, a cloud-like platform? Um, and one of the biggest that we see and that we've been able to help out with with our customers is how do we customize that last 10% so we, we, we've introduced, let's say, a gateway or we introduced a service mesh and either at the edge or sometimes even in between the applications, there are needs around customizing the behavior of the network or customizing the behavior of the proxies. So typical customizations look like supporting existing wire protocols. Maybe some of them are industry or vertical specific. Uh, you'll see the need to add uh, more specific customizations and telemetry that the proxy uh, captures, especially things like uh, implementing security protocols, things that might not be very industry standard, but have existed in these organizations. And if the mesh or this technology is going to be adopted, then it needs to be backward compatible with these existing you know, brownfield applications and, you know, the way they communicate on the network. Uh, there, there's also going to be things like light transformations. How do we take this header, mangle it up a little bit, put it over here in this header, because that's what, that's what the upstream applications expect and, and so on. So there, there's a really large, almost um, never ending list of what customizations you might need to actually productionize and get a system like a service mesh into, um, into an organization. Now, so at, at Solo, what we've been doing is you know, a lot of the technology that we focus on is built on Envoy. So either our glue gateway is built on Envoy or, um, you know, Istio is, is something that we've, um, we've been supporting for our, our customers is built on Envoy. And so we can, we can build the customization, customization directly into Envoy. But WebAssembly has kind of come to the forefront as the, uh, uh, the right way to build these types of extensions. And I can explain a little bit more about them. 
So WebAssembly actually originated in the web browsers as a way to speed up the execution of code in the web browsers, but also open up the opportunity for folks to write extensions to web applications in different languages than JavaScript. So WebAssembly is a binary format that you write your, your, your programs and your extensions in any language that you like, high level language, like a C++ or a Rust or a Golang or whatever, and then compile that into a binary module that can then be loaded into a, uh, a host VM, a WebAssembly VM. And this is something that, uh, you know, is not a new idea, right? We've been building and taking high level uh, languages and compiling them down into different portable formats and running them in either some, some sort of VM or some sort of host. This is, this is the same idea. So we can take this, we can, again, we can take the a code in a language that you desire to write in, or maybe code that you have already existing and try to compile that down into a format that can be embedded into a web browser, or in this case, as we see on this last line, uh, on Envoy proxy. And as I mentioned, Envoy is one of the leading proxies for building this type of uh, uh, mesh or application networking technology. So an important part of WebAssembly and running it in any of these, these hosts is that you're kind of taking untrusted code and embedding it into an existing system. Now, WebAssembly is built to be secure. I mean, if it's running in the browsers, just like a JavaScript engine, it needs to be secure. And one of the things WebAssembly does is it, it enforces a very tight memory boundary around that module. The module can only use whatever memory um, and, and functions and uh, variables that the host gives it. So it can't just start calling out to uh, either any other host um, functions or outside of that, that sandbox. So it's very uh, safe and, and secure. It's also extremely fast, at least compared to alternatives, right? So if we look at in the browser, we see that it's, it's faster than a JavaScript uh, implementation. If we look at uh, maybe Envoy specifically, it's faster than some of the alternatives. So some of the alternatives to extending the capabilities of Envoy include things like calling out to a, an external service and having it process some logic like, I don't know, for example, we have uh, customers that do funky things with HMAC on the request come in, they have to do some HMAC validation. Well, they might reach out to an external auth service to do that out of, uh, out of the process of the proxy. If we could do something like that inside the proxy, now we don't have to take that additional hop and, um, you know, and, and that speeds things up. It's not as fast as writing the code directly into the Envoy proxy itself. So if you wrote it as a, as a C++ extension to, to Envoy, WebAssembly is not going to be as fast as that. But the downsides to baking it directly into the proxy itself is, first of all, you have to write it in C++. You have to compile it and statically link it into Envoy itself. So now the binary that you're running isn't upstream Envoy anymore. It's your own distribution that you just created. Um, and so that's a very important consideration, especially when you start talking about all the different types of customizations that you might want. So will you have one build of Envoy that has all of the customizations? Or will you have, you know, 10, 20 different distributions that you're going to try to support? It'd be nice if you just had the one single distribution and dynamically load those customizations in as needed. So as I said earlier, with WebAssembly, we can, we can use ideally any language. Now in practice, we'll see some are better suited today than, than others, but we can use uh, any language, which then gets compiled down into an intermediate representation of the of um, the code, and then eventually executed into the into the VM. So here's where it gets interesting, because for frameworks like like um, Service Mesh, especially those built on 
Envoy, we have this opportunity now to not only, so service mesh itself kind of organizes and programs the network at the L7 or the application layer. Now we can have very fine grain customizations that are tailored toward you know, the way you've written your applications already, and especially that might be organizational specific. So if we take a look at Envoy today and the mechanisms and how a request would flow through the filter chains in Envoy. So Envoy is built on this pipes and filter type architecture um, and request comes in, goes through one of these first steps, continues on to the next to the next, uh, and eventually gets routed, either, either sent back or, or routed to an upstream service. So Envoy is a proxy, right? So it's proxying the request, it's adding some additional capabilities to the request once it gets on the wire. Now you can see the fourth box here going down uh, as you flow through this, this chain of filters, you can add, you can, so first of all, you can configure any of the out of the box filters that exist in Envoy to live in this chain, but you can also add your own custom filters. And so that's something that we've done uh, in the past. So you, you write this in, in C++. But as I said, with WebAssembly, you can write this in a different language than C++, compile this down to a WebAssembly module, and then run that piece, run that module as a step in this filter chain. So WebAssembly becomes this mechanism of extending the capabilities of an existing Envoy proxy with you know, the code of your choice and the language of your choice. Now how that happens is the, the filter in Envoy, so the, the filter in Envoy has an API, right? And how we translate that into um, code that the, the WebAssembly module will be able to understand is we have, so first of all, we need a, an execution engine to be able to run WebAssembly. And then we need a interface between the Envoy filter and what Envoy understands natively and the sandboxed WebAssembly VM, All right? And so that's called um, the, the application binary interface. So you might see this term, and that's why I'm, kind of, I'm covering it. You might see this term when you start looking at um, building WebAssembly modules for, for Envoy. And all the, the ABI does is specifies a set of functions that can be imported into your WebAssembly module and um, functions that are exported. Um, so in, in other words, you're only allowed to use and see a certain handful of, of functions, um, for example, to make external calls or something that Envoy will allow you to use. And then your application can implement these callbacks um, that on the, you know, the, the ABI and the filters will actually call into. Now, all this stuff sounds a little bit complicated, but you shouldn't worry too much about that because this is, this is what's happening in the, the Envoy side. What you are more interested in as a developer, let's say, uh, you're interested in the SDKs that kind of wrap this ABI and abstract some of these details away from you. So there are SDKs for C++, AssemblyScript, Rust, and TinyGo to be able to write your applications in these languages, compile them down into a WebAssembly module, and inject that and run that in, in an existing, um, existing Envoy. So again, the, the SDKs that have been built around this to abstract some of this detail are your entryway into building WebAssembly modules for, for Envoy. So then the question becomes, how do you start using these SDKs? How do you build these modules, pull the, the correct tool chains and all this stuff to be able to build the modules? Uh, and then when you build the modules, how do you, what, what, what do you do? How do you install them? How do you uh, maybe share them, publish them? And there's some interesting parallels here between the experience that uh, we saw crop up around Linux containers and the experience that we want with something like WebAssembly. And there's a very important distinction because 
with Linux, Linux containers and, you know, setting up C groups and namespaces, all that stuff, even the, even LXC and some of those APIs that built up, up around it initially, they weren't all that well suited for the developer experience, let's say. Uh, and so that's where Docker came in and you know, built a nice API, a nice developer experience around using containers. And so that's what uh, this open source project WebAssembly Hub is uh, aiming and trying to do for WebAssembly. So we have this uh, simple uh, CLI that allows you to quickly bootstrap a new WebAssembly for Envoy project in a handful of different languages that you can choose. And then it automates a lot of the boilerplate, um, you know, lining up the ABI versions, lining up the SDKs, finding all the tool chains that you need to properly build the, uh, the WebAssembly module. Um, we have also have a OCI style and uh, spec that describes what a, a WebAssembly module would look like once it's packaged. And then you can take that, publish it into an OCI registry and share it and uh, ultimately pull it down and install it into a running Envoy framework, like a service mesh. So uh, WebAssembly Hub and the WASMI tool allow us to, to do that. And to get started, let's say we go to Firefox and go to WebAssembly Hub. To get started, you can do, so first of all, you can, you can come take a look at the WebAssembly Hub. You can see some of the WebAssembly modules that folks have been kicking the tires on. You can come over here to the docs and get started. So install the WASMI tool, tutorials for, uh, for getting started and, and starting to build your, uh, your own project and, and so forth. And what we're going to take a look at is a demo here of of, uh, of us building out a WebAssembly module and going through this developer workflow and figuring out how, how do you deploy this to a, a running Envoy based framework. So let's take a look at that. So again, the demo, we will be taking a look at WebAssembly Hub and specifically the, the CLI tooling around getting started with a project, building it and the whole life cycle around that. Uh, so if you come to the docs here, you can look in the installation and the getting started tutorials, building our different um, WebAssembly modules, just a little bit outdated. We have more uh, languages that we support here. So let's take a look at the, at the demo. So the, the CLI that we would use to start get started with our WebAssembly experience here for, especially for building for Envoy, is this WASMI tool. And with, with WASMI, what we can do is create new projects. We can build them, deploy them to existing Envoy-based frameworks. And then we can also, there's a, there's a workflow around pushing them and pulling them from a registry. So let's take a look at building a WebAssembly module for Envoy using, using this developer experience for uh, a couple different languages. So if we do demo, let's do tiny go. Let's take a look at our existing deployment. We're gonna be using Istio for this. We have the Istio control plane deployed. We also have the book info application running. Now, if we make a call between the product page and the details service, we see the call completes, it's a it's a HTTP call. We've also dumped some of the headers. What we're gonna do in this demo is just create a WebAssembly module that extends the capability of, of either transforming headers or, or adding new headers to the, the request or the response. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to build, we're gonna bootstrap a new project. And we're gonna use WASMI init and then we're going to put it in a, in, in a new directory and we're going to pick a language that we want to we want to use for this WebAssembly module. So if I click on tiny go, which is what we're going to use a subset of the Golang language, we will pick the platform that we want to target. In this case, it's Istio 1.7 and then it creates it. Now, if we go in and open our project, we can see we have 
um, some of the boilerplate code already set up for us. So all we have to do now is either go in and edit existing uh, fu functions that, that override uh, so, so the callbacks that Envoy will be calling into, or we can add new ones that uh, align with the SDK. If we look at this runtime config JSON file, this is a metadata file that um, is used in the packaging of this WebAssembly module as a OCI style um, package. So that's all good. Now, let's say we want to build our project and turn that into a WebAssembly module. So what we're going to do is run WASMI build. We'll tell it what type of uh, language we're using here. And then we're going to tag it using a, a format that's similar for, or familiar to what you would do with um, other OCI images. And so we'll give that a few moments to complete. Well, it downloads. While we wait, what, what this is going to do is download the, the, the Docker image, as you can see, to provides all of the right versions of Go, um, the right versions of the SDK, and builds everything consistently. No, it's still going. Almost there. Apologies, I should have downloaded this ahead of time. And there we go. Now we've downloaded the builder and and now we're going to build it, which shouldn't take too long. We're going to tag it using the, the tag that we specified here. And now we've built the image. If we take a look and, and list it locally, we can see that uh, 0.14 of this add header demo was built and is packaged as a OCI style um, container. And then from there, what we can do is we can push that to a registry. So in this case, we're gonna push this to the WebAssembly hub.io registry. If we go take a look, if we log in under my name, you can see our demo add header uh, repo that's been added here. 0.14 is the one we just created. If I click on tags, we should see that indeed 0.14 is, um, is available uh, as of 21 seconds ago. So that's awesome, right? Now we've, we just built a extension to Envoy using Go or, or Tiny Go, a subset of Go. We packaged it as a WebAssembly module. We pushed it to a registry now that other, other folks can, can come to this, um, uh, this repo and explore the various different WebAssembly modules that, that are, you know, other folks have been, have been uh, working on and uh, you know, experimenting with and so on. And we're not limited to just C++, which is what Envoy is written in. We're not statically building this into the proxy. This is dynamically loaded, or, or will be when I show you that part. Uh, let's, let's do it again. Let's, uh, let's reset this. Let's pick a different language. Let's do assembly script. All right, so we have the same thing. We have Istio running. We have our book info demo running. And when we make a call, what we're going to do is we're going to insert one of these WebAssembly modules into the uh, Envoy proxy. So we see headers here. We don't see any additional headers yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Wasmi init, do the same workflow, but now we're going to do it with assembly script, which is a variant of TypeScript. And we're going to pick the platform we're targeting. And now if we open our project, we see something like this. We see our assembly, assembly script source here, which was automatically bootstrapped by WASMI, the WASMI tool. We see the same runtime config packaging here. So now if we build our project, it'll use the same build 
um, build container that we did, but now it's going to do this using npm and using JavaScript style build tools. So we'll give that a moment. Shouldn't take too long. We see it tagged again as 0 0.15 in this case. If I list it, we see 0 0.15. The assembly script uh, was a module is a little bit smaller than the Golang one. And now we can also push that one to the WebAssembly Hub repo. Now what we want to do is actually deploy this to an Envoy based framework. So let's take a look. Again, we'll call between product page and details. We don't see any, any headers there yet. What we're going to do is why does me deploy Istio? Let me uh, give that a second here. I'm going to pause the, the output. This is a live demo. So, and it is typing, but and the output's still going. I just pause the output. Uh, why does me deploy Istio? The specific tag that we want and then any configuration that we that we want to give to it. Now sometimes there is ah dang it. Um, there's still a race condition that we are aware of here. I'll give it a second. Um, that is not very nice. All right, well let's 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 try this again. I should cross our fingers here. All right, there we go. Now it looks like it has taken. So what this has done is it has injected the WebAssembly module into each of the pods running in the book info namespace. So in the book info namespace, we should see the output of our uh, WebAssembly module, which in this case really didn't do too much. We just added a, uh, a new header when, when we get the response. So if that's the case, now that my demo is not uh, automated anymore, let's, let's, let's first take a look at what, what we created under the covers for Istio. So if I do get Envoy filter, book info, what we see is we've created these book in, or these Envoy filters to patch the Envoy proxies to load the WASM module. If we actually take a look at one of these, let's take a look. We can see that we are adding a the WASM filter and that it is calling out to a WASM module. So if that's the case, then what we should see is when we call between product page and details, what we should see across our fingers is this new header that we that we added. So let's run this. And indeed, we do see the the new he header that we've added with the with the specific configuration. Uh, let's come back here. Uh, we're using hello instead of world or saying hello tomorrow. And that and that's what we see in the request path here. So that's the extent of my my demo here, I do encourage you to take a look at the WebAssembly Hub tooling, go ahead and take a look at um, Istio and some of the service meshes that are supporting WebAssembly. Uh, the caveat that I should point out is that WebAssembly in Envoy was just recently merged into Upstream. Up until now, it's been on its own fork, but it's recently merged into Upstream. It um, It's in a state of, let's just say, it's still settling out a little bit. It will, I believe it'll be available in, in Envoy 1.17. Even then, I still caution that this is still kind of new technology uh, that will need some soak time. So definitely experiment with it, f push the boundaries of it and the limits of it, um, and you know jump in and contribute in the community in terms of issues and um, you, you know whatever experience that you have with uh, WebAssembly. And uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us um, or the the broader WebAssembly community for any thoughts or questions. So thanks again for um, stopping by my talk.